Well, thank you very much for coming to show your thoughts. Uh, my name is Daisuke Shinagawa. Sorry, I'm not a uh, staff member of SOAS, but I'm a visiting staff here. And uh, today we will have a talk by Professor Nobutaka Kamei, and uh, I'll briefly introduce him. Uh, he's a um, professor at Aichi Prefecture University, and also now he's based in Paris. And uh, I think there as a visiting researcher in Ecole de what it is on science social, right? And uh, his uh, oh right, <laughs> <laughs> and his uh, I mean uh, uh, Professor Kamei is very famous uh, scholar in Japan in terms of the uh, sign language studies, and uh, actually uh, he started his field work in. West Africa, I think, something like 20 years ago, I think. And actually, this is not his first visit here in Seoul. Uh, he's been here just for 20 years ago, just before going to his first field trip to Cameroon. So this is a second visit for him. And, uh, well, so the title of the talk is The Creation of a Contact Sign Language in Western Central French-speaking Africa. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, presence here. Uh, as uh, Shinagawa-san told, told you, this is the second visit to this university, SOAS. Uh, it was 1996, just before my first visit to Cameroon. I visited here, a libra the library of SOAS, to start my African studies when I was a young student. So this is the second visit and I'm very happy to uh, be here with the results of my fieldwork for around 20 years in African areas. So uh, thank you uh, uh, to, and please enjoy um, discussions with me around one hour, or one hour and a half uh, like this. So let me introduce myself a little. I'm a cultural anthropologist and I, am, I have been uh, uh, doing my field work in Western Central Africa since 1996. My, uh, the, my doctoral uh, thesis, the topic of my doctoral thesis was uh, on hunter-gatherer children in the tropical rainforest of Cameroon. Also, I studied my uh, fieldwork with uh, multiple, various African minorities like uh, uh, hunter-gatherers, children with a school, school education, people with disabilities, and especially uh, today's topic is uh, deaf communities in African countries, especially in French-speaking African countries. Uh, let me introduce uh, a little more. I am a certified Japanese sign language interpreter and I am a husband of a deaf partner. So in Japan, I'm always uh, living with, with using Japanese sign language. When I visit African countries, I use uh, local African sign languages. Now, uh, I'm living in France for uh, several months and now I am trying to start to learn French sign language in Paris. And yesterday I met for the first time British uh, deaf person and I first tried to learn only alphabet uh, A, B, C, D, E like this uh, as British deaf way. So mainly I'm living in Japan with Japanese sign language, also uh, working with African uh, local sign languages. And I'm very uh, in, uh, I'm very interested in the various situations of um, deaf communities in European countries like France and Britain. So uh, today's purpose of the seminar is in French-speaking Western Central Africa, the situations of sign languages and deaf culture have not been clarified yet by linguists and anthropologists. Yes, there are uh, several uh, studies, uh, for example, in Nigeria, in Kenya, in South Africa, etc. But uh, most of the researches uh, have been conducted in English-speaking uh, East or South Africa. So, uh, most of the, in most of the French-speaking uh, African countries like uh, West and Central Africa, uh, very um, few researches uh, can be found. 
So I started my field work in Africa in 1997 with the method of participant observation in, uh, in African deaf communities with using their local sign languages. And participant observation, this is a, an, an anthropological term that means I myself have to learn their local languages and I try to use with them to be a, be a friend or a community member to participate in their uh, everyday life, um, eat together, live together, talk together, and I learn multiple aspects of their culture. This is the name of the method, anthropological method, participant observation. In this uh, seminar, I, with the data I collected in nine countries in Africa, I will report the outline of the history and the, cult uh, the actuality of a context sign language created with American sign language and spoken written French in this zone. Also, some projects of sign language dictionaries in Africa will be introduced. So, as a background, uh, so this, these two maps are very important to start my seminar. In Africa, it is said that American Sign Language, ASL, is widely diffused. Uh, not only in English-speaking Africa, but also in French-speaking Africa. There are two maps of Africa. Red map means the official uh, the distribution of French, spoken French, as their official language. Uh, around 20 countries adopt uh, French as their official language. On the other hand, this blue map shows the diffusion of American Sign Language. So, when we see these maps, it's uh, uh, clear that the diffusion of American Sign Language covers almost all the French-speaking African countries. But the reason why it is the purpose of this uh, presentation. So, I try to show four questions uh, to be solved in this conference. First, what were the historical backgrounds of the diffusion of ASL in West Africa? Second question, what kinds of sign language are used today in these areas? Uh, third question, what research activities are conducted today, especially in French-speaking West Africa? And fourth question, what kinds of international research exchanges related to African Sign Language are conducted today? So, I would like to answer these questions at the end of this seminar. Other method, uh, when uh, my first visit in Cameroon to Cameroon was in 1996, when I was a, 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 a post, a doctoral student, and I studied uh, my work with hunter-gatherers' hunter children in the forest. But n next year, that means I, I stayed for around two years at that time. So, uh, in uh, 1996, I studied uh, and I arrived at Cameroon and studied my field work, field my, my long stay and my field work. And during my stay in Cameroon, I uh, happened to m meet a deaf person in Yaoundé, the capital of Cameroon, and I, added, I started to add my second research topic to work with deaf communities in Africa. So, uh, 1997, I, uh, I started and, and till, uh, today, uh, I continue my fieldwork in nine countries in Western Central Africa. I, I adopt participant observation and interviews with uh, deaf communities with using their local sign language. Yes, I visited nine countries and mainly I have been working in Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire and several times in Senegal, three French speaking countries. Other countries, uh, about other countries, I visited uh, only once or twice for around uh, and three weeks or one month, not so long stay, but, but mainly in three countries. So, my methods of research is uh, something like anthropological way, for example, participant observation. For, this is the example the of the observation in the field. This is a deaf church, deaf persons, uh, deaf Christians uh, get together to pre uh, pray and learn Bible. So, I participate and talk with them in their local sign language. 
Well, I've been to many, many, many times and uh, interviews uh, with deaf uh, persons, especially uh, old, for uh, around 50 years, 60 years, deaf persons. Uh, to learn about the, the experience and his life history and so on, and uh, with using myself in sign language. Also, I'm collecting all the photographs to clarify the history of deaf communities and deaf education in these areas. For example, this is the first photograph of the, uh, uh, the, the deaf school in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, it started with around four students and it, now it, it became a huge school with more than 100 students like this. But I understand that uh, I, I can clarify the um, history of the deaf community with these materials. And I often I use interviews with all the photos that is I show, I collect all the photos and show uh, to the old uh, interviewees and uh, talk with them in sign language and they, uh, they start to talk about um, their history, their life history with uh, observing uh, these photographs. This is a very uh, good uh, way to uh, remind, um, uh, to uh, uh, hear the life history. And also I, I'm doing some uh, filming that is uh, uh, to recording uh, movies of uh, 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 their science, but later I will show you some experiences about them. So let me start the first uh, start to answer uh, to the first question about the history. What were the historical backgrounds of the diffusion of ASL in West Africa? During the era of colonial rule by France, Britain, and Belgium. Uh, there existed no school education for the deaf in West and Central Africa. It was 1957, just the year of the independence of the Republic of Ghana, when Andrew Foster, uh, he was an American deaf pastor and educator, uh, Andrew Foster founded the first school for the deaf in these areas in Accra. He also started his activities in Nigeria in 1960. This missionary, uh, Christian Mission for the Deaf, and this missionary mission group founded by Andrew Foster uh, introduced uh, American Sign Language, ASL, for the first time in Africa. So this is the photograph of Andrew Foster and he was, what is important, he was deaf himself, he cannot hear. And also he is an African-American, African-American. And uh, often he, uh, he is called uh, father of deaf education in Africa and uh, very, very much respected among deaf communities in Africa. So he was born in uh, Alabama in the United States and became deaf when he was 11 years old. Uh, he late, uh, after that, after he became deaf, uh, he went to the school for the black deaf. Uh, please note that there at that time in the United States, there was racially segregated educational system. That, is, that means there were, in Alabama, there are two schools for the deaf. Mm, uh, one school for the deaf, uh, deaf white children. And another school was a deaf uh, uh, school for the deaf black children. Racially separated educational system. But he, Foster was an African American. That's why he entered, enrolled in uh, Black Deaf School in Alabama. And he was uh, he graduated from Gallaudet University as his first, as its first American African American Deaf student. At that time, there was a university. Also today, it exists. And there is a Gallaudet University. This this is a Gallo, uh, university for Deaf. Uh, students, and um, the majority uh, was white students at that time, but Foster uh, uh, was enrolled in this university uh, uh, and graduated as its first African-American student. And uh, later he founded a, a mission and named Christian Mission for the Deaf and started his work in African countries. But unfortunately, he died in the airplane crash in Africa, in Rwanda, in 1987. 
So I summarized his activity for around 30 years in Africa with this map. Uh, he founded around um, 31 deaf schools in 13 countries uh, with the blue, blue color. And also he added several uh, countries with deaf churches, churches for the deaf in four countries. So uh, total, he, uh, his activity was, uh, he did his activities in uh, 17 countries in Africa, 13 with schools, four countries with and, and deaf churches. And this is a very important and interesting point. Uh, I counted 31 schools and classified it into two categories. Which zone? English speaking or French speaking? And uh, finally found that Foster founded six schools in English speaking countries and 25 schools in French-speaking African countries. Yes, around 80% 80 exist in French-speaking African countries. That's very interesting because Foster was an American. He was educated in English and American Sign Language. He was born and grew up in America and started his work in Africa. But it's very interesting point. Foster founded uh, Foster did his activity mainly in French-speaking Africa. That's why this is a very import, important and interesting point. So later I will add some explication and let me see the number process of the, no, the number of uh, CMD schools, Christian Mission <coughs> schools, uh, Christian Mission for the Deaf schools. Uh, that is the group of Foster. And he, he studied his uh, work in 1957, the, in, uh, the year of the in independence of Ghana. And he continued his work with around five schools for around 15 years. And later, he studied his, uh, he changed a little something. In 1974, to uh, add rapidly, uh, every year for around four schools, five schools, to 31 schools for the deaf all over Africa. 1987, it, this is the year of the death. He died in this year. This is the, the end of his, his activity in Africa. But if we can obviously find there are two eras, two eras, two stages. First stage with several schools and second stage with rapid increasing uh, situation. And simply saying, first stage means the activities only in English speaking Africa. That means Ghana and Nigeria, two countries. And the second stage means the activities in French speaking countries, around 11 countries. So how he, did he succeed in founding these schools as an American, English-speaking man. Mm, this is important. In 1973, uh, his mission uh, founded the Christian, for, Christian Center for the Deaf in Ibadan, a center, training center in Ibadan, Nigeria, for the, for the purpose of the training for teachers in French-speaking countries. The ser series of teacher training courses in Ibadan uh, uh, started in 1976 and ended in 1987, invited this series of uh, teacher training courses, invited at least 161 trainees from at least 19 countries in Africa. So this is an old photograph of the center, Christian Center for the Deaf in Ibadan. And he invited many students from all over the continent of Africa. And uh, who managed this center and teacher training course? Uh, Mrs. and Mr. Foster. Uh, Andrew Foster was an, an, a deaf African American. And Berta Foster, uh, his wife, she was also deaf and she is from Germany. Uh, so 
uh, Andrew and Berta Foster, two deaf managers uh, organized everything uh, to start the center, invite uh, students, and uh, organizing the, um, the serial uh, teacher training courses and, and etc. So this is a, a, an old photograph of uh, the teacher training course uh, con uh, conducted in, it was 1980. And 191 trainees came from 19 countries in Africa and many trainees were deaf. Many trainees were deaf. Yes, uh, there are some hearing students, hearing students uh, participated, but the majority were deaf people in this kind of class. So where did they come from? Uh, this is a map of CMD trainees countries who learned uh, sign language, language in uh, Foster's uh, training courses. 19 countries and this is the same map as I shown I have shown uh, in the beginning of the, this seminar and this is the uh, French speaking African countries so it is also clear that the uh, Foster's activity that is Foster's teacher training courses covered almost all the French speaking African countries like this So who taught, who taught them? Because Foster was an American and teacher, uh, uh, young students came from French speaking African countries. So who taught them? This is a question. But I found that every year the teachers from the Republic of Benin came to Ibadan to work as the sign language instructors for the uh, training courses. Victor Bodunu, Mario Stitu, Serge Tamomoa, Hoyabu, etc. All were deaf instructors from the Republic of Benin. I would like to show the map of Benin. Benin is here, a very small country next to Nigeria. Nigeria is here and Benin is next to Nigeria. And as you see here, Benin is Benin was a former French colony, that, so Benin is a French-speaking country. That's why ben, Beninese te teachers know how to read and write French. And they are deaf. They know sign language. That's why Foster, every year, Foster invited teachers from Benin to Nigeria to let them teach other students. That's why Foster was an American, but he succeeded in teaching many, many students from French-speaking African countries. Yes, deaf teachers from the Republic of Benin, very important um, keeper, key persons to understand the whole situation of the distribution of sign language in Africa. After the training, these trainees returned to their homeland to become teachers for deaf children and became the core persons who created the, uh, their transnational sign language. The schools and churches for the deaf founded and managed by them in every country uh, became the most important place of, uh, for the signing communities. So, I'd like to continue to the second question. What kinds of sign languages are used today in these areas? I'd like to explain uh, the cases in English-speaking countries and cases in French-speaking countries. So in Western Central Africa, there are multiple countries with uh, English-speaking countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and so on, and many, many French-speaking countries former Brit British colonies and former French colonies, like this. Yes, by uh, a linguistic de de database, for example, Ethnologue, uh, it reported that African Sign Languages 
now it was also as uh, uh, so sorry sign languages in west africa have been considered as the various dialects of asl in the world for example in the page for asl and ethnolog uh, the lang uh, language database on the web reported that asl was also used in various african countries like this so uh, it was regarded as the di uh, multiple dialects of uh, American Sign Languages in Africa. American Sign Language in Africa. However, I conducted my field work and observed the, uh, the situation and I found that the, the, the actuality was a little different. Uh, in Ghana and Nigeria, in English-speaking countries, the deaf communities have developed their own sign languages based, uh, uh, ba uh, based on ASL, American Sign Language, spoken written English, and the local signs created by the deaf. That means ASL, American Sign Language, was introduced by the mission, and they uh, often use it with mixing some elements of spoken and written English, and also they started to add some local signs in African context and today they have uh, they have developed their own sign language sign languages and already have their own language names uh, Ghanaian sign language and Nigerian sign language on the other hand in French speaking countries uh, the deaf communities have developed their own sign language based on ASL, is the same situation, and with uh, mixing spoken or written French, not English, but French with French, and local signs created by the deaf. However, they do not have their own sign language name for their local sign language. So, this is the I see uh, an old photo photograph uh, I took in Togo in 1979, just after the foundation of School for the Deaf in Togo, in this country. And this pho photograph shows the situation of the language contact of two different languages. This teacher, he is a deaf teacher, deaf man. Uh, he is writing something on the blackboard. This is the written French he is writing, because Togo is a French-speaking country. So he is writing something in written French. On the other hand, children are using, this is, yes, yes, uh, Jesus Christ. This, is, uh, this word is borrowed from uh, ASL. So they are using ASL-like signs with using written French. This is actually the, um, uh, the situation of uh, language contact in West African French countries. So, I can summarize this situation with this model. During the colonial era, uh, before the independence of African countries, uh, France uh, introduced spoken and written French to Africa as the colonizer. Yes, but not into introduced French sign language because French sign language was very oppressed and not allowed to use, uh, 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 they are not allowed to use uh, sign language also in Fran France. So they, uh, they did not import uh, French sign language to Africa. It kept only in Europe. And French, spoken real French intro was introduced to Africa now, uh, before the independence of African countries. After the independence of Africa, uh, the missionary, Foster's missionary, started to introduce ASL, American Sign Language, to Africa. Yes. In English-speaking African countries like Nigeria or Ghana, ASL and uh, English met here in Africa and uh, developed two languages, Ghanaian Sign Language and Nigerian Sign Language. But in French-speaking countries, French and ASL met here on the continent of Africa and 
this language contact created a new sign contact sign language in Africa. For example, what kind of uh, uh, modification, what kind of uh, uh, phenomena were found during uh, among the French-speaking African countries? For example, I'd like to show some uh, small, uh, some simple examples. For example, alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G from America, used in America, was introduced to African countries to uh, show French uh, characters A, B, C, D, U, F, F, G. It's the, the same, just the same as uh, signed in the United States. However, there are some letters uh, uh, found only in French and not used in America in, in English like U accent tegu, U accent grave, U cedir. It, the unique uh, letters used only in French but not used in America in English. So they started to arrange some, some, something, some letters, for example, E. This is the, 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 the letter E used in America, but they introduced it to French-speaking Africa, but no letter for accent tegu, so they started to modify with movement, for example, accent tegu, accent tegu, like this, or accent grab, opposite side, accent, accent tegu, accent grab, accent grab, like this. Uh, alphabet C introduced to Africa, French-speaking Africa, Africa, C, C. But no, no letter for this sedil with this is something. So they start to modify this uh, this letter to show this sedil, sedil, sedil like this. So they started to modify uh, the system of American signing to adapt their system uh, useful in uh, adapt the uh, to adapt the uh, science to the context of French. Uh, committee, especially um, like alphabet and other words. For example, lo, oh, this is this means water, water um, uh, in English, and uh, American originally uh, ASL, American Sign Language. The uh, water is uh, uh, the, the sign for water is like this, like, like this water, water used in America with alphabet W. W, water, water, water. But in French speaking context, it's not W, it's E. So they started to modify this into E. O, 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 like this. Or church. In America, ASL, deaf people in America signs as with this uh, word church with alphabet C, C. But in the situation of French Eglise, Eglise, it's not C but E. So they started to change it into Eglise, Eglise. Or in Africa, there are many Muslims, Muslims. So churches are very important and mosques Mosques are also important, so they started to create a new sign language, mosque, 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 avec M, M, mosque. Donc, originally in America, they used church, only church, but introduced to Africa, and they started to arrange it to adapt the sign word to French, like église, that means church, and created, invented a new word for African culture, mosque, mosque, that means mosque, with M, like this. Also another example, ah, word order is also important. Deaf community, deaf community, deaf community, deaf community in, in the United States. However, uh, French was, um, uh, uh, in the uh, French grammar, um, word order is not, not the same as English, uh, th that means community deaf, communauté sud, communauté sud, so noun and adjective, noun and adjective. So they started to change the word order, communauté sud, communauté sud. For example, other example, adjective noun, 
the word of that has been changed into a noun and adjective, like French uh, grammar. And for example, compound words, for example, bonjour, that means hello, bonjour. And, and bon, uh, of course, there are uh, in America, uh, the word, word bonjour exists, but uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, that does not exist. And excuse me, excuse me, I'm always living in France, so sometimes I uh, uh, happen to talk in French. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the word bonjour uh, means hello or good morning or um, something in America, but in uh, French speaking African context, bonjour, um, the, the deaf people sign with bon means good, bon, and jour means day, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. So in America, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, good afternoon, or hello, hello. Another um, uh, expression exists, but uh, the, 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 the combined words like uh, bonjour exist, and not, do, do not exist in the United States. And African people, African deaf people, uh, bo borrowed some uh, vocabulary, vocabulary or words to invent the original compound words uh, often used in French-speaking context. Pazanko, not yet, not yet. In America, they sign not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. But in Africa, pazanko, uh, expression pazanko, and that means not yet, is uh, signed with not and again. Pazanko, pazanko, pazanko. That means pa, not from America and again Angkor from America, but created another expression, Pazanko. That means not yet. This is the way. So it's not the copy of American sign, already adopted to French context, but not French sign language. This is the new expressions uh, created among deaf communities only in Africa. So after the process of the language contact between spoken, written French and ASL, African deaf communities developed a new sign language with long words of ASL and grammatical uh, characters of French. Through a long-term field work that started in 1997 and the discussions among the deaf community, the sign language recently started, this sign language recently started to be considered as a newly constructed independent sign language, sign language that differs from ASL because of these characteristics. That means large influence of spoken written French and the vocabulary of African context. That means the second, uh, first point I already explained, and second part, for example, manioc, 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 cassava, cassava, or plantain, plantain, banana, ba uh, banana for, uh, for cook, for cook, uh, it's, uh, et cetera. Uh, for example, um, cal uh, food culture or religious words, or et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, many um, local uh, vocabulary has been added and uh, used to together with the long words from ASL. So the field data and the products of several dictionaries of this sign language edited by Afri deaf Af Africans support the recognition that the name of this sign language is now changing and that the identity of the African deaf community is also shifting. For example, this is a dictionary, sign language dictionary published in Benin, edited by Serge Tamamo, a deaf pastor from Benin, and the title of this dictionary was something like this, Le Langage, Le Langage de Sin du Sous African Francophone, Sign Language of the French Speaking African Deaf, and not with the words of ASL. This is the sign language for deaf Africans. His expi uh, ex uh, this expression means something something about their identity, not uh, the copy of America, but their own African deaf people's language. So this is the pro our proposition. During the collaborative research with African deaf communities, uh, we started to propose the new language name for, for their local uh, language, Langue de Sindafric Francophone, LSRF. 
that means fran francophone, French-speaking African Sign Language, uh, LSAIF, is a generic term for sign languages used in deaf communities in French-speaking Western Central Africa with loan signs from ASL and an influence of spoken written French. That means contact sign languages made of ASL and French in Africa. Some deaf communities started to use this name. For example, this is a new sign language dictionary published in Côte d'Ivoire. Écoutez mes mains, dictionnaire de la de langue des signes. Listen to my hands, sign language dictionary. They started to call their language langue des signes d'Afrique francophone, dialect du Côte d'Ivoire. So, langue des signes d'Afrique francophone is a generic term for the contact la, lang, sign language widely used in Western Central Africa. So they start to uh, identify their language name, langue des signes d'Afrique francophone, dialect in Côte, Côte d'Ivoire. So I can summarize this situation with this figure. Origin was France. So France was the first country to start deaf school in Paris, in the, in the world. So uh, around two centuries before, uh, a, a little uh, before French, the French Revolution, uh, a Catholic uh, mission started a, a, a small school for the deaf in Paris, and this was the, the origin. This was the first school for the deaf in the world. France was the origin. And they developed uh, their sign language in France, uh, that, is, that is LSF, Langue des Signes Française, that is French Sign Language, in France. And after around half century, after around a half century, a French deaf teacher, a French deaf teacher visited America to start a, the first school for the deaf in America. Uh, his name was Laurent Claire, Laurent Claire, Laurent Clark in English. Uh, he, he was a French deaf teacher and he learned langue des signes français, French sign language, and visited America to start uh, the first school for the deaf in America and started to teach in their sign language, that means uh, French, speak, uh, French sign language. And later, uh, American deaf communities developed their sign language with using signs from France, with uh, using some elements of spoken and written English, and added local signs in America, and developed their own sign language. That means American Sign Language, ASL. So, ASL, French Sign Language, uh, is a mother, uh, the mother of a AS, the origin of ASL, American Sign Language. And one century later, an American, African, African American pastor, deaf pastor, visited Africa to start their first uh, school, school for the deaf in Africa with using American Sign Language. That was the, uh, the, the activities of um, Pastor Andrew Foster. Then uh, ASL uh, started to be uh, diffused uh, uh, on, on the continent of Africa. On the other hand, uh, during the colo uh, colonizing era, French colonizers started to introduce spoken or written French as their uh, colonial language in Africa. Then ASL and French met again in Africa and created a new contact sign language, that means Langue des Signes d'Afrique Francophone, LSAF. So, then the birth of LSAF, uh, Langue des Signes d'Afrique Francophone, means the two centuries histories of language diffusion around Atlantic o Ocean over three continents, Europe, America, and Africa. We can summarize this, the situation and background of this contact sign language in this worldwide figure. Okay, so what research activities are conducted today, especially in French-speaking West Africa? And I would like to show some uh, examples of my uh, trials, my 
projects with African deaf communities. As a research project of Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, uh, Tufts Japan, the first dictionary project of uh, LSAF started in 2007, uh, around 10 years ago, and we created the first DVD movie dictionary in 2008 with the collaborations of deaf communities in Yaoundé, Cameroon. And I created, uh, I we, we created a di disc, DVD disc, an uh, electronic uh, sign language dictionary with the collaboration of Cameroonian uh, de uh, deaf community. When I was doing this project, I was a member of an institute in Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. So this is the product of the, uni the university. And the second project in Cote d'Ivoire, I started in Abidjan as a research project of the grant in aid by, uh, in Japan, Kakenhi. The second diction project uh, started in 2008. And after the interruption, uh, uh, unfortunately, there was a civil war in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire and we ha had to stop for several years. But recently, I st restarted again and continue, it continues still today with the collaboration of the deaf community in Abidjan. So I started in 2008 and now continuing editing the, the, the electronic dictionary, visual dictionary. I'd like to show some, uh, some photos for, to show the situation of collaborations in Abidjan. This is the first research training with deaf, deaf people. So to uh, develop, uh, promote the collaborative researches, it is very necessary uh, to uh, share uh, knowledge and skills of research, how to uh, research, how to share the results, and how to um, conduct, how to organize the research team, and, and so on. So I, I'm uh, signing as a lecturer, and. Uh, they are uh, collaborators, deaf uh, collaborators uh, in Abidjan. And uh, we had lots of meetings and started, uh, to, started to film their signs. So, of course, the models are deaf people. And also, I started to train deaf persons to film or organize these kinds of sessions. So I'm not a um, um, chef, I'm not the, the, oh, I'm not the organizer to uh, do everything, no, I'm something like um, ad an advisor uh, or something, so uh, they are doing uh, autonom autonomously. For example, uh, I'm a little busy and I have only two weeks to stay there in Abidjan. Uh, I have to go back to Japan to do my uh, work in my university. But even during my absence in Abidjan, they can continue by themselves without me. It, it's a very good condition for to promote their research activities. So it's also important to share the result and report the situation to deaf uh, uh, community in Abidjan. So I often have a report meeting to have uh, my presentation to explain uh, the uh, process of our collaborative research to general deaf citizens. So. In, in this kind of situation, I, I'm also sign, I'm, I also uh, sign myself. That means I do my presentation not in spoken French, but in their sign language. It's very important to promote uh, good relations with the, the, the minority people. Also, I visited the university, the university in Abidjan to share the result and, and ask their support, the support of researchers and professors in the university. So, and uh, sometimes I visit um, the ministry to explain the situation. This is something like um, a social contribution by researchers. 
not uh, uh, of, uh, I think it's not the obligation for research, but it's a good idea to promote these kind of good relations with uh, uh, multiple stakeholders in in the field. So now uh, we collected around 350 films with the collaboration of deaf uh, counterparts in Abidjan uh, last year, 2017, and now uh, we are. Mm, uh, we are now uh, creating the disc. Uh, probably this year or next year, uh, 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 we will finish all the project in this city, Abidjan. And I would like to add some situations about the international research exchanges of uh, African sign languages uh, with the cases of workshops on sign language research in vocal. Uh, vocal, uh, probably uh, some of you know this conference, World Congress of African Linguists. Uh, this is a congress held in every three years and uh, in 19 international academic conference. And in uh, 2009, they started to include sign language workshop in the World Congress. And also they included the research on African sign languages in the objectives of the constitution of vocal. I started to participate in this uh, sign language workshop, workshop since 2009, uh, from the beginning. And this is the constitution of this uh, World Congress. Uh, they started to include aims and objectives, uh, linguistic studies on African language, both spoken and signed. And to create awareness of the academic circles and etc. Uh, general public recognize the African sign language both spoken and signed. So, Vocal, this academic uh, organization started to promote every uh, promote sign language researches and uh, every uh, time, every congress they organized, uh, they started to include sign language session. So he started in 2009 in Germany and the first sign language, uh, African sign language workshop was held in, in Kern, uh, Germany. And most of the topics from East and South Africa, but several French-speaking African countries Topics from these countries in, are included. Also, uh, in, 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 around uh, 14 presenters and 11 presentations have, have been done in the first works, it was very successful. And second one in Cameroon, Buea, and seven pre presenters by seven presentations by seven pretty presenters in uh, Cameroon, the second work at the international. Sign language workshop in Africa, and the situation is like this. And third one held in Japan, uh, we hosted uh, the the congress, uh, whole con congress, and also we hosted the sign language workshop for the first time in Japan, and we had uh, uh, ten presentations by eleven pre present presenters. So this year, probably in uh, held in uh, this year, the conference will be held in Rabat, Morocco, and the fourth sign language uh, African sign language workshop is ex ex expected to be held this year, this summer. So a uh, very important thing is this: uh, many deaf presenters presenters, many deaf researchers started to participate in these kinds of international conferences. For example, in Germany, five presenters out of 14 were deaf in sign language workshop. In Cameroon, three out of seven. In Kyoto, Japan, six presenters out of 11 were deaf presenters, deaf researchers. So, I think Mm, deaf people now started to learn more and more in universities, institutes, and so on. So, 
deaf people are not only the models or obje objects of research, but also researchers themselves. Deaf people are not only the objective objects, but also the subject, the actors, researchers themselves. So uh, it's very important to recognize this situation <coughs> if we have um, international uh, linguistic conferences, uh, in, in, uh, including um, sign language topics, you probably we uh, accept several deaf researchers as presenters. It's very important for us to promote deaf studies, sign language studies, and related researches. So, for example, in the conference in Germany, there were sign language interpreters like this. Also, in, this is a conference in Kyoto. This interpreter is from Kenya, and he came from Kenya and served as interpreters, as an interpreter in Kyoto. So, it's very important to provide sign language interpreting service for the Congress, International Congress, in order to promote sign language research and accept deaf presenters and participants. This is, these are very good examples and good activities. So, around one year, uh, one hour, so I would like to conclude this seminar. And I would like to start to answer four questions I proposed uh, uh, in, at, at the beginning of the seminar. And first question, what were the historical backgrounds of the diffusion of ASL in West Africa? There existed the international educational activities by an African-American deaf pastor and his colleagues, that means the deaf Africans. They did their work widely in West Africa and it resulted in the wide diffusion of ASL. So second question, what kinds of sign languages are used today in these areas? In English-speaking Africa, they developed Ghanaian Sign Language and Nigerian Sign Language. In French-speaking Africa, a contact sign language de derived from ASL and spoken written French is widely used. Some deaf people started to call it LSIF, Langue des Signes d'Afrique Francophone. So third question, what research activities are conducted today, especially in French-speaking West Africa? I showed several projects uh, conducted by myself. Some trials, some projects to edit dictionaries of Langue saint Afrique Francophone have been studied. However, they are not enough at all. And fourth uh, question, what kinds of international research exchanges related to African Sign Language are conducted today? In 19, uh, 2009, Walker started the serial workshop on sign language research as a part of the World Conference in every three years. Deaf researchers uh, started to participate in these workshops. So it's very important to pre prepare sign language interpreting service in these kinds of academic events. So final, final slide, yes, yes. I'm now, as future issues, I'm very interested in these kind of situations. There is the diversity of sign languages in French-speaking areas of three continents. As I told you, France was the origin, and they created French sign language in their country, and it introduced to America and created ASL, and also, it, in North America, there is a region, Quebec, in Canada, uh, with uh, French as their official language, and they developed Langue des Signes Québécois, Quebec Sign Language, as their own sign language, different from French Sign Language. And later, ASL was imported to Africa and m met again with uh, spoken French to create, to invent another sign new contact sign language, language in the Afrique Francophone. For, this is for uh, deaf people in French-speaking West Africa. So, in the world, there are wide 
French speaking zones, France, Quebec, Africa, and so on. But sign languages are very different. French sign language, Quebec sign language, language in the African francophone, French speaking African sign language, and so on. So, the universality, the uh, common French, uh, and the diversity of sign language just among them is very important uh, issue, very important issue, but actually not clarified, not uh, researched yet exactly. That's why now I'm conducting my fieldwork always in Africa, but in the future I would like to add the perspective to compare or clarify the relations among them and Mm, it's very, uh, it's, I think it's very important and interesting to share this recognition among deaf people, among hearing people, among people in French speaking zones and English speaking zones and other people in the world. So this is my perspective. So let me introduce only one uh, book uh, published in Japan. This is an ethnography of deaf people in Africa. So this is the history, bio, uh, bio, a history of Pastor Andrew Foster and his colleagues and teachers, children and so on. And they created a huge uh, language community in Western Central Africa. So this is uh, the first ethnography uh, on African deaf people, published first published, uh, published in Japan. And now I am trying to divide chapters to translate into English or French. Now I'm doing my efforts to introduce the, these results into uh, in the world in French or English. So uh, sometimes you can <laughs> get some chapters on the web or some academic journals and so on. So my research was conducted mainly by the aid of uh, Japanese granting the aid or uh, by uh, support, financial support my, of my university, Aichi Prefecture University. And I'm very ha uh, happy to work with collaborators in African deaf communities. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, say thank you for uh, organizers in SOAS, this University of London. And I'm, I had a very good uh, collaborative work with uh, UASH USS in Paris, France. And I'd like to say thank you for everyone who participated to this uh, seminar in this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, any comments for anyone? Well, yeah, please. Could I, um, when you say started your work in Cameroon, this is a country with hundreds of languages. And I wondered, before there was any European influence, was there any kind of international, or in, or inter, international didn't exist, there were no nations, but were there any native sign languages which were widely diffused throughout that area, which, of which some elements might be incorporated into a later, or incorporate themselves automatically? Thank you very much. Yes, I, as you mentioned, Cameroon is a multilingual country with around 100 or 200 uh, ethnic languages. And now they adopted the two official languages, uh, French and English, because first Germany occupied Cameroon and later uh, it was divided into Anglophone and Francophone. And later independent, uh, it became independent. So that's why they have two official languages, French and English, and multiple uh, languages not uh, officially recognized among uh, uh, by by the government. This is the situation of Cameroon. And thank you for your question. And um, it's very difficult to clarify the situation of deaf communities before the arrival of ASL. I didn't mean necessarily. Uh, yeah, people. yeah, yeah. Could normal, just ordinary hearing people might have been using sign language amongst themselves. Ah, really? Yeah. Yes, yes. Ah, yes. Like ah, you that. mentioned that, but okay, okay. Uh, yes, uh, and in, uh, in in daily life they use some simple gestures to uh, show numbers, for example, ten, like this, and a system of numbers or some gestures, but I think um, they. 
d uh, I, I observe the daily conversation. Sometimes they use uh, uh, the neighbor's language, for example. Uh, he is a uh, he use uh, uh, some uh, a language and he, uh, he use. Uh, the neighbors uh, language second or third lang languages so um, yes I observed some simple gestures uh, beyond their ethnicities but <coughs> I have not seen fluent sign language system among Huron people and I'd like to add something about deaf communities. Before, arri before the arrival of ASL, were there any um, sign language system among deaf communities in Cameroon or other African areas? It may be, maybe it, there were something, there were something. But uh, during my interviews, I always asked, before the arrival of American Sign Language, what were the situations among, of communications among, among deaf people in these areas? But uh, they only say, only in small, um, only um, simple gestures, for example, like this, Papa or Mama, like this. This is the, an, an imitation of uh, uh, figures or uh, something activities. So mm, they always say mm, there were no system systematic uh, sign language, only uh, mm, uh, small uh, some simple gestures used among um, uh, villagers like this. So yes. I think the, the development of uh, sign language and, and the language community in Cameroon is uh, after the, the, uh, in the introduction of ASL. Another uh, situation in Cameroon is um, some uh, school for the deaf started to introduce second uh, foreign sign language that is a lang uh, LSF, language in Francis, French sign language. So first they introduced ASL and already diffused, but uh, another school started to introduce second foreign sign language, uh, uh, French sign language, and um, it uh, young generation started to learn in French sign language. So in Cameroon, uh, uh, there is a little difficult situation, and that means uh, co coexistence of ASL and uh, French sign language, and th this is another recent problem in Cameroon. Thank you. Can I follow up on that question? I, I know that the situation in Cameroon well, uh, but I know of work in Ghana, um, which I'm sure you also know by, by a Dutch colleague, Victoria Nist. Yes. Um, and she has worked on, on village signs. Oh, yes, yes. But it's, you know, it's, a, it's a small case study, but she has worked in a community which has you know, a high incidence of deaf people mm -hmm. do some genetic backgrounds. And they have started developing a, a sign language, a village sign language, which is different and independent of ASL, but it's just used in that community. But it is, I think it's a pretty fully fledged sign language. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, I don't know, but, but you know, I mean, part it's special because there's so many deaf people. But it might be the case that similar systems existed in, before ASL came in different different communities. Yes, thank you very much. I know her work, uh, very good work, and uh, the case in the village of Adamorobe in yes. Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, there's a village uh, with high rate of population are deaf, so they developed their own sign language used only in this village. This is the case of Adam Morobe sign language. Mm -hmm. And Ghanaian sign language used in schools and urban areas, this is the influence of ASL. Mm -hmm. The majority of deaf people in Ghana use this one, Ghanaian sign language. And vi uh, I once visited Adam Morobe and they continue to use their own sign language in Adam Morobe village, but their children, their uh, uh, deaf children go 
to the dormitory schools for the deaf mm -hmm. in urban areas. That's why they, the children started to learn their second sign language that is Ghanaian sign language. So I don't know the future of this minority language, but uh, it may be influenced or changed a little or something. Uh, it's very important to ob continue to observe the situation. So I may, yes, I think it may, there may be some uh, minority sign language groups in rural African areas, I think. But I think Adamorobe is a very special case because many deaf habitants live here together to develop a systematic sign language. But other cases, for example, deaf children is alone or only two, three deaf, deaf uh, persons live in the same village. Uh, only a short communication, simple communication among them. Yes, it, there is, is a, there's a possibility to develop their own sign language system. But if it's the population of the group is big, it may be easier. And not so big, for example, only one children, two deaf children like this, it may be uh, very weak. So, um, I, yes, I've heard about the situation of Adamorobe and northern Nigeria, there is a, a, a sign language named Hausa Sign Language. It is very different from Nigerian sign language uh, linked with ASL. So, of course, it's very important to uh, recognize and, and uh, clarify that these uh, s uh, small groups, minority sign languages, it may be become the, uh, the important key to reconstruct the situation before the arrival of ASL in Africa. Thank you. Just a, <coughs> it's very interesting that uh, I didn't know that the French sign language was possibly the base for American sign language, the basis, so there should be some uh, common features. Mm -hmm. And another question that comes from this, you said that American sign, uh, French sign language went to America, but you didn't say if it was United States or all of America. Um, did, did the French sign language spread through all of America, from top to from Alaska to South America? <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for your question. And this French deaf teacher went to the United States of America to start their first school for the deaf in America. Yes. This is the history of the United States. And they developed ASL and introduced to Africa. Now, the situation of Canada or countries in South, Af uh, South America, I'm not a specialist, but I've heard that Canadian people, including uh, people in Quebec use something, some sign languages similar to ASL. So that's why. So, so it, uh, we can say that French sign language was introduced and developed and became an American, American sign language and it influenced to Canada, Quebec, and also in South American countries. However, I do not uh, know very well about the diffusion from the United States to Canada or Mexico or uh, countries in South America. It is very related to ASL. So the origin of France influenced to North and South American continents by 
、えー、by、えーとえー、by the de development of ASL and one process of the diffusion ASL is to the diffusion to Africa I understand so so yes it's very <laughs> important and interesting question so、uh, America means now in this seminar I、uh, explain this America means the United States but it is、uh, linked with Canadian people Quebec people deaf people in Uh, Latin America and so on. Thank you. Yeah, another question. I'm curious, you say there's a difference between Ghanaian Sign Language and Nigerian Sign Language.、Um, and I'm, I'm curious on, in two ways, I think. On the one hand, the distinction between Ghanaian and Nigerian on the one hand, and Afrophone on the other. Um, because, because I think there's a number of people who feel that the term Afrophone is in many ways inappropriate these days, as, as is Anglophone.、Mm -hmm. um, because, because obviously, if you look at the area which we call、um, Francophone, the vast majority of people actually speak another language than French. So there's Wolof, there's Mandinka, there's Tendit, so you know, you have a wide variety of African languages. So by, so by designating these areas by the reference to the European name, It has a slightly neo colonial link to it, but that might be more in Francophone than Anglophone, I don't know. So that's one angle. So I'm curious about the Nigerian Ghanaian language, whether that in part avoids the West African English type designation.、Um, but I'm also curious on the other hand, so there is, there, you know, people don't really talk about Ghanaian English and Nigerian English. I mean, it's West African English, there's Nigerian Pidgin, which is different.、But You know, it seems to me to have like a national sign language, like Ghanaian sign language. It's the first time maybe that there's a real convergence between national boundaries and linguistic boundaries. Because part of the linguistic reality in many African countries is, of course, that the national boundaries don't, don't map onto linguistic boundaries. So Ghana has like, I don't know, 40, 50 languages.、Mm -hmm. Lots of them are spoken in Nigeria or, or, or Togo. So, so you have a much more complex situation. So, I'm sort of curious that in these emerging varieties, there seems to be an alignment between linguistic identities and, and national identities.、Mm. And whether part the naming reflects that rather than you know, linguistic differences between the two varieties.、Mm. And then going back to the Francophone, it's interesting that in that doesn't happen, the reference clearly is to the former colonial power.、Mm. Okay, thank you very much.、Uh, I'd like to show.、Um, wait, please. Yes. Yes, this is the, the, the activity of Christian Mission for the Deaf in Africa. And、uh, he studied his work in Ghana and Nigeria, two English speaking countries. And later he expanded his work in various French speaking African countries. So his activities, was, his activities were. Actually, international, not limited、uh, within national boundaries. So, they, they introduced ASL and started to mix with, started to mix with a local、uh, sign vocabulary and developed in Ghana, Nigeria, and、uh, other French speaking African countries. So, I don't know. When they started to use the name of Ghanaian Sign Language or Nigerian Sign Language, but I think Foster himself he only said、uh, they use vocabulary of ASL, not with the name of Ghanaian or Nigerian Sign Language. So it, it may be after his death or after he stopped his.、Uh, Activities in Ghana or Nigeria. And other French speaking countries, they, have, they didn't have the name, proper name, to call their、uh, sign language. 
That's why uh, we, we started to discuss and uh, give a new name for this language. So uh, the, the differences of the language boundary and national boundary is very, very important. But uh, I think it's very important to notice that these situations, these phenomena occurred only after the independence of African countries. So Ghana became independent and Foster founded the School for the Deaf. And Nigeria also, after the independence he started, and other African French-speaking countries in the same way. So after the independence of um, the nation, the nation state, uh, the, the education activity started uh, in the, the capitals or uh, huge cities with deaf schools and started to accept deaf children from all over the country and trained in the, their school and they uh, started to organize um, deaf community, for example, deaf churches and deaf association and so on. So, the creation of national sign language or national sign language communities are very, very new phenomena after the independence of nation states in Africa. For example, Ghana and Nigeria, they have their own language of with their country name. Example, in Kenya, there is Kenyan Sign Language, Ugandan Sign Language, uh, South African Sign Language, uh, etc. Ethiopian Sign Language. There are, yes, yes, in mainly in East and Southern African countries, uh, there are many sign language, languages with their country name. Kenyan sign language, Tanzanian sign language, Ugandan sign language. It occurred, mainly occurred after the independence of these nation states. It may be thus, uh, thus um, it may be uh, related to the educational activities after their independence within the nation state. So, and I, I'm now clarifying, not, uh, not clarified everything in Africa, but uh, the language boundaries and frontiers of um, uh, nation state and the community identities and language use, language name, it's very important to clarify the relation among them. For example, in Japan, uh, country name is Japan, and spoken language is mainly Japanese, and we have Japanese sign language, and it's, it's almost the same. But in Africa, so it's very different the situation is very complicated and different. So, yes, carefully we have to continue to clarify the similarity and differences among them, nation state, language boundaries, language name, and community identities. Like this. So thank you very much for your good advice for my future aspects. Okay, yeah, actually, so I'd like to ask more questions, but the uh, time is up, I think. So, thank you very much for the talk and the... Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, if there is anyone 